Welcome to the podcast. It starts with you, with me, Vic O'Farrell. I ask my guests, by understanding their own behaviours and personality style, what impact on their lives, both personally and professionally, has there been? What is it like to live and work with someone of your style? I mean, this is not about labelling people, putting people in boxes or an excuse for bad behaviour. It's about recognising, understanding and respecting that we're all different. And what impact can you have on others by looking in the mirror? Because it starts with you. So welcome to another episode of It Starts With You, talking about personalities, profiling and all things behaviours. I am delighted to be joined today by Dory or Dorian Casey. You can give your full details of um, who you are, where you work, but actually also more importantly for the listeners, what is your profile and what does that actually mean? So you use the DISC system, don't you, like I do? Yeah, I do. Um, and my profile is ID. And um, fairly high actually um and it's been like that for a long time it hasn't changed um even though I suppose I would consider myself I've gone through some self-development work and it's still my innate personality that's not going away (laughs) so what does that mean in terms of so if someone's listening that doesn't understand what profiling is what does it mean to be ID and DISC okay so I stand for influential it's um people tend I tend to love being around people I feed off of people's energy um and I really um love being in a position where um actually ironically I don't like to be center of attention that makes me cringe but I do like to be in an environment where I am surrounded by people we're having conversation dialogues flowing there's a, you know, I, I like your debate now and again, and, and I love to be challenged. Um, so, yeah, I'm high energy generally mm-hmm. most of the time. And the D in my profile um, is dominant. So I tend to like to get things done quite quickly. There is a level of impatience with me that I'm very conscious about. <laughs> I have to slow <laughs> down sometimes. Um, and I often find that my my brain can act faster than what I'm saying so I tend to slow myself down (laughs) to try and catch up um I like bullet points and actually the C in my profile which stands for compliant although there are is a part of me that does like processes because it keeps me from being not being distracted I think if someone threw a journal at me and asked me to read it and and spend hours just like picking out the detail I it would probably want to make me throw up (laughs) so that's been a nutshell Uh, but I totally get that in terms of the C part of your profile because I'm the same when it comes to detail give give me stuff in bullet points and I can read it but that's not to say that we can't do detail and stuff it's just got to be in the right headspace haven't you got to be in the right Absolutely. And I think when I was managing people, I used to be a um, a site manager of a multi-led site. Um, and also I ran gastro pubs. So I've managed for a long time and I've recognised that in myself. So, but actually my attention to detail at work, it I was always on top of. It was really important for me to get those things right because I think they're the things that I was really just passionate about. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the, I suppose in my mind, unnecessary detail, <laughs> I, would, I would shy away. I would actually recruit people that loved that kind of thing as well. Um, so I would always recruit people that were maybe my opposite in that, that really loved things that maybe you know wasn't my bag but also you know it was their bag and they absolutely loved it and loved doing it and wanted to thrive in that environment so yeah so when we met through the Bartlett Mitchell family um because I've been on your podcast and before you did what you do now so and obviously tell the listeners a little bit about what you do as, as you come into this bit but 
did you understand profiling? Did you understand what your impact was on other people before you really knew it? Yeah, because it's always been a passion of mine, I think. Generally, because my profile is very much driven by people, I've always been like interested um, about people's different personalities, how they show up, and, and how we're all different and how we can all really connect. And I suppose there is a link to that within my personality profile. Um, in terms of, I suppose, impact, I think I learned a lot more about myself before I understood the impact that it had. So I think it, I think when you go through the personality profiling, such as DISC, and you learn more about yourself, then you can really understand the impact that you have on others. And I think that was a imp more important lesson for me because actually coming in and being all jazz hands and, and being high energy, <laughs> it's, it's not always right all of the time. <laughs> No, and it, even when you're surrounded with other people who are all high energy, sometimes that's me. But yeah. sometimes I'm like, I just not jazz hands today. Can we yeah, take the jazz yeah, hands out? Absolutely. Yeah, so what, absolutely. I mean, I, what you said there about understanding your impact on others, but you also said about the detail part of it and, and employing people, recruiting people around you that are different to you. We tend to just go along life, don't we, with people who are very similar to us. It's just a natural thing. So what kind of advice would you give to the listeners if they if they need to recruit people who are opposite to them? What, what adjustments, flexibility, what kind of adaptations can you do when you're with somebody who's a polar opposite style to you? I think initially establishing that your values are aligned because you can be different. But if your values aren't aligned, then you could be totally different. And that could be a major clash. But I think once you understand how you show up, um, understanding that your values are aligned, you can then understand how you can probably get the best out of people and, and the best out of the situation and maybe even the best out of yourself as a result. Mm. So would you say this has had an impact on you both personally and professionally? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's one of those forever growing and learning experiences because people are, we're all different and we can all show up different at different times as well. And we're not always the same in one given, given time, space and, and environment. So I think forever learning and just staying curious is key. Yeah. So do you, does your profile change when you're under pressure, for example? Yeah, I think I get <laughs> Suddenly, the high D and the, the control maybe come into place and that need to get things in order. Um, yeah, I think so. And with the yellow part of you, do you, do you find that you can get easily distracted as well? Yeah, I th all those things that I really don't like, I will be. I'm, you know when people say look focus on the, the bigger thing or the, the thing that you don't like first um and I know that that's true but I'd always struggle with it because I would think if I get all the nice things out of the way then I'm in, in a better mood and I can focus on the, the things I don't really like and then potentially that they can be pushed to the side so it it takes a very very conscious mindset for me to really just hone in and focus on those things that maybe I don't necessarily like doing and then finding something that's potentially positive within that task as well okay so you've say that you do that you you're very conscious about making sure that you do that what about when you meet a different people are you are you now because we've both done our training through the coaching academy um and that's where we, we did the disc training as well so would you find that you are very conscious about people's behaviors now or is it just a natural thing that you're like oh straight away I know whether you're just the difference between somebody who's outgoing and reserved um a mixture of both I couldn't actually say a definitive answer to that um yeah I can definitely pick up on people but I'm also conscious being you know trained coach through the coaching academy it's really important to stay non-judgmental as well. And I think that's a very, again, you have to be really conscious. So I think when people consider, when you think about DISC, you often think, oh, it can be potentially a judgmental tool mm -hmm. in a way, ironically. 
So I really try and distance myself from that, acknowledge different personality styles, different traits that are coming through, but still stay curious and open-minded um, and removing any judgment that may be, that may come out as a result of DISC. Yeah. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it's it's we don't want to put people in boxes and label people. Absolutely. But the subconscious mind is saying, "Oh, you're so slow. Why can't you just speed up a bit?" And it's like, oh. <laughs> it's God, just very bias. green. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know, and and you do when you're with people who are polar opposites. It's not changing who we are, is it? It's it's ad- adaptation and flexibility of of who we are and, and what we do and how we show up um, and yeah. being conscious when we are with people who are different to us oh yeah absolutely and yeah yeah, I I absolutely do if I recognize that someone's a little bit slower and then I I stay curious and ask some questions there will be something in my mind that says oh they've probably got some s personality in their style I probably need to adjust my my the speed in which I'm expecting them to to produce whatever I'm asking um and maybe have a little bit more empathy maybe rather than being as direct as I would to let's say a high D, I, I need to probably slow my pace and language down and be a bit more understanding in order to get the best out of them. Yeah. Well. So you're, if your ID, you're very much on the outgoing side of the, and you said you're very high ID, aren't you? Very much on the outgoing side of things. So if somebody who is polar opposite to you, you make, you know, adjustments to yourself because you understand them, but if somebody's listening to this thinking, oh, but I'm not, I know that I'm opposite to that. How how can they make adjustments to work with someone like you? It's an interesting question. Um, reduce the amount of detail, <laughs> bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> Allow them to have a look at those bullet points. And if they want to go into detail, then give them the opportunity to go into that detail. Um, I would say... Be really quite open and maybe direct because I think naturally um, an S style wouldn't avoid that level of directness, avoid that confrontation. But actually, um, ironically, I, I believe if you talk to a D or an I, that, that that's something that they want. They want that feedback. You know, they require that in order to be able to move forward and move forward at the pace that they want. So staying open, challenging and questioning them as well. Um, I really, I mean, it really depends on that individual and their high levels of ego as well, I think. as So, yeah, I mean, for me personally, I like to be challenged. So if I feel that I've done something wrong, I would like, I, I respond better to those that actually tell me directly so I can move on rather than... Um, maybe keeping it to themselves and feeling challenged by it. Yeah. Or doing it in such a calming way that actually the message doesn't land. You know, sometimes yeah. you, you yeah. can go, I'm not getting the message. So yeah, very, very, I can, I can hear already how strong your D will be then in terms of when you talk about being challenged. So yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I agree. I think, and then I suppose it's really up to the ID to be able to look, look I understand what you're trying to say. Just tell me straight. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And we're very good at doing that, I think. The higher your D is as well, you're very good at saying, can you just get to the point? But how can you do that with somebody without sounding rude? Because t- to somebody who's very high green, if you just said, just get to the point, they they actually, their subconscious will be going, oh, they're a bit rude. They're pushing. And then they start withdrawing further and further back, don't they? True. So how could you say it in a way that would make a green get to the point, basically? Um, empathetic straight away to say, look, I understand what you're, what you're trying to tell me. Maybe recap what they're trying to tell you in bullet points um, just to get a clearer understanding. Um And then maybe finish off with asking the question, have I understood that correctly? So maybe just just stopping them a little bit in their tracks, but being empathetic. Um, Because, yeah, I suppose if you're dealing with high S, high C, they may want to just really just talk all the way through the detail. And if you're on a time scale, understanding where they're going with it and then um, 
bullet pointing it for them and then getting clarity on that, Mm -hmm. I would say. So picking up there where you said um, about being empathetic. So this isn't so much about the pace. We could still work at a fast pace, but the tonality of your voice is changing. Yeah, absolutely. To soften and slow the conversation without actually slowing the whole pace down, would you say? Yeah, I think so. And it's really getting on their level. And and I think you've just brought up tone. Tone's really important. So it's mirroring their tone as well can be really effective. Rather than if you speed up your tone, it can just switch. They'll, they can often switch off. And mm-hmm. they'll be like, okay, I'm, you know, this is just a bit too much for me. You're being like assertive or maybe even aggressive in their from their perspective. Yeah, absolutely. For, and it's it's being able to put ourselves in the shoes of the other people to say, how is this going to come across? Because a red to a red, it does, you know, you can yeah. be as aggressive as you like because that's reds all over, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas a red to a green is, is not. So what would you say has been your biggest learn that you would have in this in, in now in terms of what you do with Bartlett Mitchell? I think I've done a number of disc profiles in the um, and um, and I think the biggest learning is definitely not to assume because even when I think I've actually characterised them in my mind, there'll be a curveball. So I've found that there are people that will mask their personalities in their given environment. So it's it's just to stay really open minded as well and and staying curious. Um, although DISC is very useful when you want to um, understand a situation and you notice and you pick up certain personality traits or or um, behaviours as they come across and, and then you can learn, as we suggested, is to adapt to that. But I think still it's just to stay, stay keep on staying curious and, and really getting to know individuals as well. Yeah. And coming back to what you said at the beginning of this, you talked about values, didn't you? Because you said you can be very similar in terms of personalities, but actually your values, if they're different. So how how can you read someone's values? Interesting question. Um, I think it's an alignment of your thought processes and actually what you stay true to. So... Um, I mean, and they can also be linked to morals, if you like, but values for me, um, I would say, I used to say integrity, but then it, I always find it interesting that people's interpretation of integrity can be different to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, I think it's that alignment when you know that you actually, if, if you're here to deliver a goal, and actually you are aligned in in terms of how you want to deliver that goal based on your values, I think that's that's the best way of really understanding how you can how your values are aligned, I think. Mm-hmm. Often when you have to achieve a certain goal, certain when decisions are made, what people's drivers are. And where you've described uh, people masking their personalities, throwing you a little bit of a curveball in there. That's that to me. I, I totally get that. But you can't mask your values, can you? Because no, no. When exactly they're not. when they're triggered, if someone triggers your values, you you can't pretend that you're not being affected by it. Yeah, that is true. That's really true. So um, it could be a case of. It could, I mean, it's not technically a value, but if I was to practically put um, an alignment in place, it could be like, actually, it's really important for for somebody that, that people turn up on time because it's a sh- sign of respect. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas somebody that doesn't turn up on time can still be respectful, but that's not their way of showing it. Um, so I, I suppose it just comes down to actually how we communicate as well. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and I know my own values have changed over the years because values are impacted on life's experiences aren't they Uh, but your personality doesn't so yeah this is true 
how do you know when your values have changed? I think it's when certain things happen in your life, like key key moments in your life where you think, actually, that value was was really important to me, but I don't think it is anymore. So, for instance, for me, maybe when I had children, you know, my values might have shifted slightly. Um, um, family is probably more important to me than ever. Um, my time, whereas before I had um, children, actually time wasn't, you know, I would work all the hours God sends it, you know, I lived and breathed work, but actually now my family are important to me. So it's important for me to set some boundaries there. Mm hmm yeah, and, and I mean, boundaries is a big one, isn't it? Because they're, again, they're invisible and you don't know when someone's pushed a boundary until perhaps you've got rigid boundaries on certain values in your life and then suddenly it's like, whoa, hold on a minute. Why? And it's, but I think also it, the, the big thing for me is is recognising when it's when it's happened. You know, because quite often can you see people just in the workplace, but in, you know, home life as well, where things are triggered for them, but they haven't recognised it and their personality will change. You know, they'll go they'll go completely different because someone's pressed a button, pushed a boundary on on a value, and then they've just flipped. Have you, have yeah. you seen that? Witnessed that? I think a prime example of that, we use the S style. So actually, generally speaking, I'm not speaking for all S style personalities but trust is really important building that connection and actually I think if you're if you feel that you can no longer trust somebody that can really impact your relationship with that individual um and it can take some time to to rebuild that mm. so yeah it's um it can re and it can conflict actually because also an S style doesn't like conflict so actually one would say actually if you if you're struggling with trust how are you connecting how are you communicating with that individual to help build that trust and if they don't like conflict they could be that could be seen as actually having that conversation could be seen as maybe inciting conflict mm. Mm. I think so, that, sorry go on. no carry on I was just going to say so with values, they can be quite conflicting, depending on what your drivers are and what's really important to you, or what's actually even stopping you from from doing certain things. Yeah. So, how do you get people to understand what their? I mean, personalities are, are, are behaviors. Uh, you know, personality to me is is the the core of the whole behavioral part of it. So, how do you get someone to understand that perhaps they're feeling conflict or feeling that kind of thing because their values are being challenged? Um, I think it's establishing what's really important to them. And DISC is a really good tool to really highlight that and challenge that. So whatever personality comes out of that, whatever um, core behavioural styles come from that, um, you can often challenge that individual and say, look, um, are these uh, how do these show up in your world um you know give me some examples of actually how like, conflict's been or having a difficult conversation for you has panned out you know and it's really challenging them around actually what disc produces and I think that's why disc is such a really great tool because it really it really brings all of them to the forefront and gets you to really challenge yourself yeah, I mean, I fell in love with it for its simplicity as well because it's yeah. doesn't, it it is real high level stuff, but actually powerful stuff in terms of what it is that you're all about. So, what would you say? What what advice would you give to somebody listening that perhaps hasn't doesn't understand their own personality? They might be just having a challenge with somebody at work who's very different to them. What would be your your advice to them? I think if yeah if they're unsure and actually I think it's sometimes it's not a case of whether you're aware of the, the fact that you're unsure it's usually the fact that actually you're in a situation where you're feeling that this this um, relationship is challenged 
And actually, most of the time, our ego can come into play. And we actually often believe it's the other person that's the the issue. And it might be, it might not be. <laughs> but um, generally, I think it's really important to reflect on ourselves. And DISC is a great tool. So I suppose my advice here would be, use a self-awareness tool such as DISC, which like you alluded to, it's very, it's really simple to use as well, to really truly understand actually what's showing up there. So it could be if you are feeling conflicted with an individual, you may find actually, oh, the, it, do you know what? It could be the way I'm coming across. You know, the high D in my profile is being really dominant and controlling and wanting to take, take control of this situation. Or actually, I'm dealing with a high I that wants flexibility, that wants um, that wants to be able to have their own opinion and, and not be controlled. And actually, that's why I'm getting resistance. So, yeah, yeah. I would say personality profile. <laughs> like the podcast says it starts with you because unless you look yeah. in the mirror and understand your own style you'll never be able to flex and adapt for other people and get to know what other styles want and need um because it's not all about doing it your way is it yeah absolutely and sometimes we just have to adjust tone down tone up and it's recognized especially in a leadership role where actually your role is to influence and and develop and help grow not only the individuals around you but obviously the business and and yourself and it's important that you are in that growth mindset of constantly wanting to learn and understand the situations around you Mm -hmm. a bit more and then finally my last question is where would you say you've seen yourself change the most could be personally or professionally, where you've had to be a completely different Dory? <laughs> I would say, actually, having my children has calmed me down. Um, I would say I was, before having children, I'd probably more read in my profile. You know, I was very driven. And I, I think back to the sites that I ran, it was very much about, you know leading and, and being in control but it, it, it wasn't necessarily in some ways it was the right way in some ways actually I could have probably done things a bit better and actually taking on board DISC and, and really trying to understand myself a bit more has mellowed me slightly to be a bit more understanding empathetic really engage with active listening more because it's not necessarily natural for an ID to be a to be an active listener so for me it was really driving in on those traits that I wasn't strong at Mm -hmm. and developing them and becoming a great mum well (laughs) I can't let them decide (laughs) how many children have you got two and then what age are they one is nine and gabriel is six so they're um um, yeah they're a very cute age yeah very cute age but challenging mum age as well pushing boundaries yeah Yeah, but i don't mind that i like to be challenged hi hi (laughs) (laughs) yeah no i get that i get that (laughs) i do so uh thank you for being here and helping us to understand the the ID really is what it is, helping us understand that style um, and what we could do to learn more. If people want to get in contact with you, where can they find you? What social media platforms do you hang out on? Um, LinkedIn mainly um, and um, Facebook and a little bit of Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but not TikTok. Eyes can't do TikTok because we just no. so distracted by it. We're just... oh, yeah, I, try, I must admit, because I know I'm easily distracted. I do try to avoid them a bit just yeah. for that reason. I, I could get lost in a rabbit hole with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Dory, it's been lovely to talk to you. I will put all of your contact details and the links to your profiles into the show notes as well. So anything you would like to leave the listeners with? Um, go and get a disc profile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. start, yes, you've got to start with understanding what you are, so... Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you for being on the show. You're welcome, Vicky.
How has this conversation had an impact on you? What have you learnt? What will you do differently? Do leave a review on Apple or Spotify on It Starts With You podcast. And also leave a comment down below. Do also then connect with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. And why not even join the Facebook group It Starts With You and keep the learning ongoing. Thank you for listening.